Recently, a 52-year-old physician in good health decided to have his mercury fillings replaced. He immediately became ill within two weeks and would have died had he not had a heart transplant. He had developed idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy. Research has linked this often fatal heart problem to mercury. IDCM heart has 22,000 times more mercury in it than a heart that's sick for cardiovascular reasons. You need to be protected when mercury fillings are removed. Everyone, including the European Union, the American Dental Association, the Amalgam Manufacturers, and the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology agree that removing old mercury silver fillings can be dangerous because it exposes everyone present to enormous amounts of mercury. Fortunately, there are steps that any responsible dentist can take which will greatly reduce the risk and minimize everyone's exposure to this toxic metal. First, the dentist needs to understand that once a removal procedure begins, the mercury filling will spew enormous quantities of invisible, odorless, poisonous gas. This must be captured in a vacuum and removed from the vicinity of the dental personnel and the patient. Some poorly designed dental offices have vacuums that exhaust indoors, like a closet or a utility room. This is wrong, because the whole office then becomes contaminated as a result. The next important step is to protect the breathing zone. This can be done for the doctor and assistant with a Mind Safety Association mask with an additional small particle filter. An even better system is uh, like the one used for hazmat disposal experts or firemen. This provides fresh air under positive pressure. This avoids the principal problem with masks alone, which is termed suck-by, where contaminated air is inhaled around the edge of the mask instead of through the filters. For the patient, it presents a slightly different problem. Positive pressure air is a strongly recommended as well. A, a suitable substitute is a nasal hood, similar to that used to administer nitrous oxide analgesia, but without the positive pressure. This reduces the exposure, but a rapid inhalation can suck by the edge of a nasal hood. Therefore, positive pressure is considered safer. Gloves? Nitrile are preferred to latex because mercury does not appear to penetrate nitrile gloves as readily as it does latex. Personally, I prefer to use a rubber dam for many reasons, but some dentists and a few patients prefer packing the mouth with cotton. It's not important because both those procedures are approved, but remember... Uh, it is do not breathe in through your mouth at all, ever, during any dental procedure. Before commencement of the drilling, the patient holds a supplemental vacuum close to their chin, and the assistant should place her high-volume vacuum within one-half inch of the tooth. And that's not the saliva ejector. It's a big vacuum. It should remain glued to that side of the tooth until every scrap of mercury filling and the particles have been thoroughly removed and rinsed away. In addition, since mercury easily penetrates latex, a vacuum such as a saliva ejector should be placed underneath the rubber dam and the patient should be cautioned not to breathe in through their mouth. A technique pioneered and taught by the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology called the cut and chunk technique involves sectioning the old filling with a burr. In the diagram, you see the burr is um, placed into the filling and drawn across cutting the filling into two pieces. That reduces the amount of drilling necessary to remove the filling. No diamonds, please, as that creates small particles and is potentially even more dangerous than using a burr. The dentist, using a full water spray from his handpiece and a supplemental spray from the dental assistant with her sy water syringe, carefully cuts the old filling in half and removes the two pieces. This minimizes the drilling necessary and the water cools the filling to reduce the mercury vapor. After the filling is out, the dam and cotton rolls should be removed and the mouth thoroughly flushed for about a minute in order to remove all the particles. These instructions can be found on the webpage of the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. I would recommend that you review them and have your dentist do the same before commencing any procedures involving mercury.